Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Today is June 9th, and it's our 56th day of distance learning. In our last week, our 12th week, and our in our backwards alphabet, it is the letter C for chalk or crayon day. I have so many chalk and crayon ideas. But first, we gotta get some learning done. So let's practice writing our letter C. All right, guys. As a review, we're going to do 10 capital C's. This is one of those letters that we don't start at the happy face. We start away from the happy face and a little bit down from the top line. Now, we're gonna go up, out, and around, and then up at the end. So almost like a full zero or a full O. Make sure you give yourself plenty of space before you start your next one and make sure that you're going from the top to the bottom, that you're going all the way to the line. Okay, guys? Around and back up at the end. Up, around, and back up at the end. Now you can make your C's a little skinnier if you want. That's fine, that's a skinny C, and that still looks like a really good C. You can change the thickness, but make sure you're not doing this. Make sure that where you start and where you end are pretty close to each other in a line. You don't want to start here and end way over here. No. You want to make sure that where you start and where you end are pretty close in a straight line. I have the dots there just to show you that. You don't normally put dots there. These are really good C's. This is a good C, I'll just erase the dots. Okay, and this is a really good C, I'll just erase the dots. But you want to make sure that where you start and where you end are about the same. They don't have to be perfect in a line. You don't want to do this. Ugh, looks like your C is falling over. So I'm going to keep that going like that. Around and back up. And once again, make sure you're giving yourself plenty of room that your C's don't bump into each other. Now, I was supposed to do 10 capital C's. Do you think I did it? Or do you think I went over? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not counting that one. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, just a little over. There's 11. Now, for our lowercase C's, same thing, only in a smaller space. Start just below the dotted line, and you're going to end just above the bottom line. Up and around, and a little bit up. 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 And you want to make sure you're giving yourself plenty of space. You want to make sure that you're not squishing this too, too thin like this. Ugh, those are just sloppy and they're hard to see, so I'm not going to count any of them. Up and around and a little bit up. Up and around and a little bit up. Just like this. Now I went to the end of the line. I wonder how many C's I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, I made way too many. All right, guys. It's time for calendar. Oh, wait, no, I have one more thing. It is not time for calendar yet. Today is Tuesday, and on Tuesdays, we usually draw the letter. We draw a picture with the letter. So let's see. Hmm. You know, I'm going to take the easy way out here. I see something that's super easy. I mean, super easy. Let's see if you guys can guess what I'm drawing. I know it looks like I'm scribble scrabbling, but remember, I'm telling the crayon where to go. I'm going controlled and slow on the outside, and yeah, I was a little fast on the inside. Okie dokie, do you guys see what I'm doing yet? I'm sorry, but when I looked at the letter C, this is what I saw, a big, bright sun. Maybe you guys see something different. I might even be able to turn that into a daisy 
oh my goodness, I just turned my sunshine into a flower. Daisies have yellow insides and white outsides, so I can stop coloring right there. A sun or a daisy. Now it's time for calendar. Okay guys, it's calendar time. And once again, we know it's June. June with the silent E. June. Not all the time is E silent, but this time it is. So let's see, do you know your months of the year? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. How about days of the week? Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Snap, snap. Now I know you guys know our pattern. So tell me, what do you think goes here? You think so? Let's review before I show it. Wave, wave, bucket. Wave, wave, bucket. Wave, wave. Ah, you guys think you know what it is. All right, did you say bucket? Whoa. And look at this, our buckets are different colors each time. I just noticed that. We have purple, we have pink, and we have red. Wow, so we had a different color each time. Now after today, we only have tomorrow and the next day of school. So if you count today, we have one, two, three days of school left. Whoa. All right, let's do our counting, guys. Let's get all the way up to this big number nine. You guys ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Super easy. Well, if that was super easy, by now this is getting pretty easy too. Today is t -t 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 Tuesday because as the T-U, Tuesday. Yesterday, which already happened, so it goes over here. Yesterday was m -m Monday. And tomorrow, which hasn't happened yet, is w -w Wednesday. Oh my goodness, Wednesday. So let's review. Today is Tuesday. Yesterday was Monday. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. Which you know what that means. It's time for us to check out the weather. Oh my goodness, guys, was yesterday windy? Yes, it was. Look at my flag today. It's not even moving. Well, okay, it's moving a little tiny bit. Let's go inside. Here are our choices. Partly cloudy, sunny, windy, cloudy, snowy, and rainy. Hmm, what are you guys going with for today? You know, I'm going to go with that too. Sunny. Today is sunny. And it's not as windy as it was yesterday, which is a good thing because yesterday was super windy. Okay, guys, it's time for a story. Okay, guys, since today is Tuesday, on Mondays and Tuesdays, I've been doing our author of the month, and the author this month is Marcus Fister. You notice it's not rainbow fish this time. This story is called Snow Puppy. <laughs> He's shaking all the snow off. I like that picture. Rascal was bored. Sophie had gone into the city to shop with her parents, but Rascal had to stay home all by himself. It was just plain mean. Rascal plopped on his chin on his paws. Then Rascal noticed something unusual outside the window. What was wrong with the sky? He jumped onto Dad's favorite chair and stood on his hind legs. White specks were floating down from the sky. They looked just like those funny soft things that had swirled out of a pillow one time. Rascal had been playing with the pillow and tore it open. Then Sophie dashed after him and Mom chased after Sophie. It had been a lot of fun. 
Rascal jumped off the chair and sped to the door. He had to jump up to the doorknob three times, but at last the door opened. There was already a thick blanket of snow on the ground. Rascal raced around and looked at it excitedly. The game with the snowflakes was as much fun as the game with the torn pillow. But the flakes were ice cold, and when they landed on his nose, they disappeared without a trace. Something was moving near the fence. It was small and brown, and now it was hopping across the field. Rascal needed to get a closer look. Barking happily, he leaped to the fence, squeezed through, and ran toward the woods. A new game! Rascal chased after the rabbit farther and farther away from home. Suddenly the rabbit disappeared. It seemed as if he had been swallowed up by the ground. No matter how hard he tried, Rascal couldn't find it. He didn't give up though. After all, he had a good nose. He sniffed and sniffed until finally his nose led him to a mysterious hole. The rabbit must be hiding inside. <gasps> cool. Rascal pushed his nose into the hole deeper and deeper until his head got stuck. <laughs> he kicked his legs to try and free himself. The rabbit backed into the farthest corner of the hole. It looked terrified. Rascal barked, but the more he tried to reassure the rabbit with his friendly barks, the more frightened the rabbit got. Finally, Rascal got his head free. He shook the dirt and snow from his fur. He wasn't so thrilled with the snow now. He was soaking wet and freezing cold, and he was hungry. He couldn't stop thinking about his food dish at home. But where was home? Rascal had no idea. There was a delicious smell in the air. It smelled just like bologna. Rascal followed the scent to a clearing. There he found a man sitting on a log eating a bologna sandwich. Rascal cautiously approached. Come here, little dog. Don't be afraid, said the man in a deep, friendly voice. You look hungry. He tossed a piece of bologna at Rascal, who swallowed it in one bite. Come here, said the man again. A person with a bologna sandwich couldn't be all that bad. Rascal jumped into the man's lap and cuddled under his coat. Poor thing, said the man. You're shivering from the cold. He gave Rascal a bite of his sandwich. Warm up, and then we'll go to town to sell my Christmas trees. It'll be nice to have a little help this year. The man wrapped Rascal in a blanket and set the pup beside him. Wow, Rascal had never been on a horse-drawn sleigh. The mighty horse stomped the ground impatiently. Giddy up, Martha! And they were off. Martha snorted in the cold winter air and the heavy sleigh slid through the white countryside. The clanging of Martha's bells and the rocking of the sleigh lulled Rascal softly to sleep. We're there, my little friend, said the man, waking Rascal up from his sleep. The man unloaded the pine trees from his sleigh. Thousands of Christmas lights lit up the square. The marketplace hustled and bustled with shoppers. Rascal watched shyly from his cozy blanket. He missed Sophie and his nice warm house. Suddenly, Rascal heard a familiar voice. Daddy, look! This little tree is beautiful! Whose voice do you think Rascal heard? He just said he was missing someone. That's probably a clue. You think it's Sophie? Let's see. Rascal leapt from the sleigh, barking and sprang into Sophie's arms. Rascal, what are you doing here? cried Sophie. The man exclaimed how he had found Rascal in the woods. We can't thank you enough, said Mom. It would have been a sad Christmas without Rascal. Then Mom invited the man to come for Christmas dinner. That's very kind of you, said the man, but I couldn't possibly accept. After that, Rascal snatched the corner of the man's coat and pulled with all his might. Well, I guess I have no choice, said the man, laughing. Rascal wagged his tail in agreement, and the whole family looked forward to a very special Christmas. Wow, and that was the last page, just snow. So Rascal got out, but he ended up having quite the fun adventure, and he got to go home at the end. I know this was not a summer story, especially when it's going to be 90 degrees plus today. But maybe when it's super, super hot today, you can think of Rascal playing in the snow. Maybe it'll cool you down. Time for some math. All right, guys, it is time to do our number 10.
and I know you're all 10 experts, you know bring the one down and make sure that the zero is close to the one and that your next number 10 is far enough away so that they don't look like they belong together in one big number. Hey look, I am making the letter C and then I'm going to keep going. There's my letter C. Keep going. Now I usually fit about five tens across my paper. Let's see if I did the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So, I'm going to erase those because it's starting to look to me like parts of the number 10. Let's go down here. There's the one and there's the zero. There's the one and there's the zero. The one and the zero must be pretty close. And the next one in the zero must have a definite gap. Otherwise, you end up writing a super big number like, oh my goodness, this. I don't even want to guess how much this is. Thousands, millions. This is 101 billion. 10,101,010. That is a giant number. That's why we always have big spaces between our numbers to make sure we know that they're separate. All right, guys. Today is C for Crayon and Chalk Day. And I cannot contain my excitement anymore. It's time for us to do some chalk and crayon crafts. Okay, so I decided to do a little of each. We're going to do a chalk craft and a crayon craft. I'm going to stay inside and do the crayon craft first. You can see we made, or I made some really cool crayon melted flowers. And I put them in a vase that I drew on a piece of paper. So let's get started on how to do this project. Now parents, typically this project requires parchment paper because that acts as a barrier for the wax that you're melting. but I didn't have parchment paper, so I put a couple extra layers of paper down when I was melting and it worked just fine. I'll show you in a minute. And this also requires some prep. You'll see here on my kitchen counter that I have five colors. I have blue, purple, red, orange, and yellow. And I just used my regular um, shredder. I tried to keep them separate on the paper to allow the kids to design what they want to design. So grab a crayon. I suggest grabbing broken crayons, but I don't have any broken crayons, so all my crayons are whole. But grab a crayon, super preppies. You know how the teacher is always telling you do not take the covers, the papers off the crayon? Today is your day. Every crayon you're going to use today, you're first going to need to take off the wrappers. So go ahead, choose the crayons you're going to use, and start taking off the wrappers. Once the wrappers are off, parents, this is a U part. You're going to have to shred the crayon. It goes pretty quickly. You do have to put some pressure on it. Because it's the shredder, I wouldn't recommend kids doing this. Okay, I've done most of it. I'm not going to go down to the nibs. And then I'm going to scrape off the inside. Now, you'll notice on these papers some of the colors have mixed. That's okay, your kids are probably going to mix them anyway. Once you have shredded them, you're going to want to set up a station where parents, you have to do the ironing. So kids can do the creating on the ironing board, but when it comes to the ironing, that's going to come to you. So come on over here, and you're going to want your iron. I have mine on high. It's up to you. If you have it anything lower, you're just going to iron some more. So these are some old papers that I used above and below my ironing. They've got some stuff on them, but you can just keep reusing them. So I'm going to put one down, put a fresh piece of paper down, and then I have a couple over here on the side, and I'm going to put a fresh piece of paper on them as well. This is going to make a crayon sandwich. Now it's time for the kids to do their decorating. So I'm going to go grab some of the crayons, hold their shavings. Now, Super Preppies, your job is going to be to take these crayon shavings and put them on this paper any way you want. You can do one color. You can do two colors. 
You can do three colors. You can have the colors mixed together, or you can have the colors all by themselves. It's totally up to you. You're going to want to spread this out a little bit, parents, because it makes melting easier. And when the kids have made it so that they're happy with the way the color is, you're going to take that second sheet of paper and make it the, sorry, and make it the sandwich, put it over the top. What you're going to end up with is two perfectly good pieces of paper. Now, I recommend, too, that since you're dealing with wax, that you put an old towel over the top. You can see I did these earlier today, and some of the wax even melted through the paper and got on the towel. It's wax. It's no big deal. Um, but I'm going to iron now. And you'll see that it really doesn't take too long to iron. I'm going to swirl it around a little bit. Super preppies, these irons are super duper hot. Do not be tempted to use them because I don't want you guys to get burned. Now parents, you're gonna feel, especially if you graded these crayons rough, you're gonna feel the crayons underneath the iron. It's kind of bumpy. Just keep going back and forth and back and forth. You have enough layers in between. I'm putting some pressure on it. Now at some point, you're gonna wanna check it because every single time I've done this, I have found that I missed an area. So I'm gonna pull this back, and I'm gonna keep going until I get to the center, because I have a rather large stack here. Oh, this came out really nice. I know I missed some here, and I could re-iron it, but I'm just gonna leave it, because I like the way it looks. Now the cool thing about this is, you have two pieces of art instead of one and like I said all it takes is once you finish with that you put a new piece of paper on the bottom stack and a new piece of paper on the top stack and then you can just keep creating so you can see here that I have some purples and some blues that I'm gonna mix together and I'm um, looking for my yellows. Uh, I'll put some yellows and some reds on here. I'm really just going to go to town on this one because it's probably going to be my last one. I've been making them all morning. Put it back over the top. Lay my sheet over the top or my towel over the top. It really is this simple. Now, once you get done ironing, you're going to see in the time it took me to iron this one that my first one is already dry. The wax cools really quick. All right, so I'm ironing this one. I'm pushing down to really help with the melting, and I'm not feeling too many bumps anymore, so I already think it's done. Let me check. Oh, definitely needs a little more. It's not done yet, but I like the way it's coming out. I'll go slowly. Maybe that'll help with the melting a little bit. Okay, the kids are really going to be anticipating the finished product. So, let's see. Ooh, that one came out dark. I had a lot of purple in this one. So, I'm done with this part. Let me show you what happens next. I told you this would already be done, and I can touch it. It's not hot. It's totally cool to the touch. Now, I'm going to... You have a choice. You can... Super Preppies, this is your part. You can cut around what you made because I think these make really good flower petals just like this or you can decide to cut into your picture and make your own petals like this so I'm gonna do kind of both and I have another flower for my flower vase I think that one's gonna go over there now you'll notice that my flowers have a green center to do that, I melted a green crayon on the fire on the um, the gas stove top. I just poked the crayon in for a second and poked it down on the flower. You can't really draw on the wax; it won't really accept it. But the flowers are also perfectly good this way. When I was happy with my flower, or when I am happy with my flower, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back and stick it. Let's see, I think I'll stick this one right here. Probably put too much glue on it. 
Yeah, it looks like it's going to have a lot of glue on the back side, but that's okay. I'm going to keep my flowers going until I have a huge bouquet of, of crayon flowers. And remember, each page has two. So just while I was talking, this one already cooled down. You'll see that it cools down super quick. And if you cut around, you'll have big flowers. If you cut into it, you can probably make some smaller flowers. So I think with my second one for each pattern, I'm going to end up cutting out some smaller flowers to put in between the big flowers. So, all right, here we go. I've got another big dark flower there. My bouquet is looking really good. I still have to cut some smaller flowers out of these and my earlier projects. That's crayon art. Took a little bit of shaving. You get rid of some broken crayons and you have a lot of fun. Now let's go outside and see our sidewalk chalk art. Okay guys, so this is a super simple outdoor photo opportunity for you and the kids with some sidewalk chalk. I drew some simple balloons and the balloons are drawn like this. It's a round with a triangle. So it looks kind of like a fish on its side. So I'm going to color in my last balloon and super preppies, you are great colorers. So get out here and if mom, dad, older brother, older sister draws some balloons, get coloring. I'm going to tell you it comes out looking much smoother if you push the chalk gently into the ground. Don't push too hard because you will cut your skin and it hurts. But I've just about got my last balloon colored in. You guys can come out here in the sunshine and color some really cool balloons. I want you to notice though that when it came to the strings, that what I did, oh, let me color in that last little balloon. We'll, uh, we'll make him part of the picture. And I'll grab my white chalk and show you what I did. So what I did for each balloon was I stopped right here and I made a gap and then I put the rest of the strings down here. You want that gap because in a moment I'm going to show you a really cool photo opportunity with that picture that you just made. So you color in one more balloon. Okay and I need my white string and we are good to go. So parents, this makes a really fun picture. Gosh darn it, Here, here's my white one. Okay, this makes a really fun picture. Now the kids can lay down on the ground, put their hand right here in a fist. Really, Chilla? <laughs> and spread their legs, put their other hand high up in the air, and smile. What a great chance for a picture looks like you're floating in the sky because you're holding the balloons. I'd love to see your chalk art. I know your teachers would love to see your chalk art. So if you do any crayon or chalk art today, go ahead and show us your pictures. As for a website, I suggest you check out Crayola.com. Really good website. Lots of art projects for kids and they'll have fun with it too. That's all for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow on our second to last day of school. I'm going to warn you, tomorrow is B for bubble day, and I've got some bubble fun planned. Bye.